And um, this shows that the, these are just some photographs of Venice now. And again, you get a chance to see the kind of, you still see the very origins of the city today. The, the bottom photograph of the, a fisherman, Bilancia, out in the southern lagoon near Chioggia and the huts. You know, I don't think it was extremely different when the first settlers came here, you know, to escape the marauding barbarians. You know, those were the kind of things they had to live in for a while. And, um, and the kind of glory of Venice, just, um, you can see that the top picture shows how there was a very, you know, as the city developed, there was, the lagoon was very much part of the city of Venice. You know, there were endless, you know, inhabited islands with monasteries, other settlements and things around it. Um, but importantly, the map on the right is something that came up recently. So a friend sent it to me from the um, archive, Archivio di Stato, and it's it's a view that the Turkish had of Venice, as though it had these big, you know, gates blocking people from coming into the lagoon. But I think that's just a metaphor for kind of the mud and the sandbanks and the shallows that made it difficult for people who didn't know Venice or have a Venetian on board to help their captain navigate across the lagoon. And this plaque comes from the nearby um, Museum of Naval History, and um, my Latin's no good, so I'll, if, you, if you're good at Latin, you can read the left-hand side, but I wrote it out in English, where they say, the city of the Venetians, by divine providence, founded upon the waters and protected by them, is defended as if by a wall of water. Therefore, anyone who dares in any way to damage the public waters should be considered an enemy of the motherland and punished with no less penalty than that inflicted on him who would violate the sacred walls of the motherland. May this edict be ratified in perpetuity. The magistrates of the water, which are still here, governing the safeguarding of the lagoon today, even though it's in a different institutional con constellation. The Magistrato alle acque is, is still exists, and it explains this kind of... Um, framework for Venice explains why the, the Palazzo Ducale is such a delicate lacework architecture, why they didn't have to have such big fortifications and as you'll have learnt through the course with Elizabeth Carroll it's um, reflected throughout the art and the architecture as well and kind of this is more or less what the lagoon looked like and Venice at the time that that plaque was written out and um, this was when the problems began it was by um, Sabadino one of the main they called him an engineer, well, we call him an engineer now, I don't know if they used that word back then, but um, he was very instrumental in, in thinking through the, the strategy for managing the lagoon system. And um, he, he drew this map at the time when they were beginning to think about having to reroute the rivers that were feeding into the lagoon because they were causing the lagoon to become too silted up and that was making it impossible for the boats to navigate. So on the one hand, the silting up of areas of the lagoon was important to keep the enemies out that, that nobody could find their way through to get to the heart of Venice and Piazza San Marco. It wasn't any good either if the Venetian navigators couldn't get in and out you know, to obstruct trade, etc. And over a very long time, you know, literally 150, 200 years, they slowly dug away um, on the mainland and made new canals to um, take the main rivers that used to feed into the Venice Lagoon to have them instead coming out north and south of the lagoon straight into the sea. And that in turn accounts for the... Um, appearance of the big beaches, you know, with Cavallino and, and places like that. And this is Venice um, in the uh, Austrian times when um, 
Uh, this is a map by uh, Combati, and it shows uh, the, the lagoon shortly before they started to build jetties at the inlet, because what I skipped telling you is the important thing to remember about Venice is that it has the twice daily tides and thanks to the tides there's the constant circulation and, and freshening of the water in the lagoon which permits you know, all the wastewaters generated by the city to be taken out to sea and fresh water c- come in um, and uh, it makes it possible for the city to survive more or less without a sewage system but um, there are other problems that it needs to deal with and so um, when, the, when the Austrian Empire was in charge of governing Venice they, and steamships were developed they felt that there was even without the fresh inputs of sediment into the lagoon system that there was still a problem with the navigation channels still being not deep enough for like bigger steamships, etc. So what they did was, at, at the three inlets that separate Venice from the Adriatic Sea, they started to build jetties. This is um, the Chioggia Inlet, and you can see the long white lines going out into the sea. In fact, I like this, when you get up close, big stone walls. And that way, they um, focus they concentrate the the tide in the tidal current in the, the narrow inlet for a longer a longer distance and that has a scouring effect and, and keeps the channels naturally deep up to a limit. The situation now in fact is has gone beyond that because um, once they built the inlets and you know as tanker traffic grew, they actually um, had to dredge a, a proper navigation cha- channel, which you see the darkest blue straight bit that almost bends at right angles, comes through the middle inlet at Malamocco and goes to the back to the Marghera industrial zone. And um, that was kind of, the navigation channel was one of the last of the major infrastructural changes that happen to the lagoon system. There was also um, extensive areas of land that were reclaimed um, beginning in between the two world wars and carrying on until, I guess, till the 50s was the um, land reclamation um, out at the lagoon periphery to make space for the development of the industrial area at Marghera, but also within Venice to, for housing projects at Saccafisola, Sant'Elena, just beyond the Giardini where we are now, and also some areas of Murano.